Hello everyone for the community call for Comet. We have a pretty packed agenda, but the last two items are slightly lower priority. So as long as we get to cover uh, and discuss a bit our plans for Q2 and V038 and get to cover a, a discussion about the support policy, I think that's already gonna make pretty much everyone happy. And then if we have time, we can go also into the data companion API and proposer-based timestamps and gather some feedback there. Uh, First, let's start with the comment, uh, with the uh, updates from the team. I will let uh, Tane, if you would like to take over and just describe a bit about V038, if you will. Sure, yeah. So yesterday we had our first alpha release for 038, and then a lot of people have been quite keen to get their hands on ABCI++ for quite some time now. Uh, originally, I think it was supposed to actually ship a year ago, roughly, and uh, we're finally at the point where you know people can start integrating. And uh, lots happened since then, so it's super exciting for us. And we're, we're really keen to hear everybody's feedback. Uh, if, if you're keen on working with us on integrating with O38, please reach out. Um, again, we're, we're super keen to hear everybody's feedback. And we're, we're still open to, given that it's an alpha release, we're, we're open to making changes to the APIs if necessary uh, to accommodate folks, but with, within reason, obviously. But uh, again, please feel free to reach out. I'll also may paste. I... Go ahead. Yeah, may, may I add that, like this, as, as an alpha, just to remind the uh, folks that as an alpha release, this hasn't been thoroughly tested. It hasn't. It hasn't, it hasn't undergone <laughs> any, sorry, any QA, um, any QA process. This is actually planned for the next weeks, and so just be careful that you know the, the thing is untested. I mean, it's it has a final shape or 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 almost final, like, you know, not do any suggestions that we, we might take in, but it's not for thoroughly tested yet. Yeah, when Sergio says it's not, it's untested, it means, it means that we haven't run our 200 node test nets on it yet. And, uh, but our, all our ETE tests and our um, our nightlies are run uh, as with all of our other releases. So we, we know at least at small scale, it works, but then at large scale, we, we still have to do that extensive testing. Um, Marco, I saw that you have a question, if, if, especially if it's not a big question, I'll just mention to people that there's the ADR on your side from the SDK team, and then uh, please go ahead with the question, and let's go into it. Um, I, I, the, the question is around uh, something that Bez left, the question on ABC++, just kind of like merging the commit phase and the finalized block phase. Um, I, I I didn't have time to go look at how Tendermint or how Comet was doing it before, um, but the question is just um, uh, before like begin block would start before the block was like fully finalized, or or am I like imagining it? Out? I'm not sure I understood the question. I think just, just like sorry, go ahead. Uh, Bez's question was uh, on the ABC++ channel, it was uh, curious, what was the motive for moving state commitment flushing to disk to finalize block as opposed to keeping it in commit? I, I don't know if I have enough context over there to be able to, to answer that. Um, so do you understand that question? I still don't understand because the commit is uh, has been left uh, separate. So I, I'm still trying to understand what the question is. Oh, okay. And then, then maybe Bez was looking at a different, um, looking at something else. Um, if if it's still separate, then I, I don't think I, I think I'll so, okay. just. I, I, yeah. Okay, I okay, I see what you mean. So so let me just you know let me just try to, to provide like an, a comprehensive answer in in the hope that it's it's going to answer the the actual question. So, um, in an in an early um, draft, I'm we're talking here. 15 months ago, in an early draft of the specification for ABCA++, we had considered uh, simplifying the API. And therefore, since we were basically uh, coalescing begin block, deliver TX, and end block into finalized block, we thought, why not just also coalescing commit with it? And so just have finalized block, which also does commit. So that was an, an early draft. But then quite quickly, we realized that um, if we were doing that, we would have to revamp and, and redesign the whole cross recovery mechanism that has been working on com on Comet and before in Tendermint for years. And this was one of the examples in this process where we decided 
to leave things as they are, to get an MVP out, to get, get a minimal viable product out. And therefore we decided to, to basically leave the commit alone and just do the, the real finalized block, which is begin block uh, delivery PXM block. So maybe what I'm I'm understanding is that this got across one of these early early drafts. I don't know, but this was actually as I said, it was abandoned, and the the final conclusion was we're not convinced it cannot be done. We were just convinced that was not the time to do that. We didn't want to fix all the problems worlds in one in one release, and this is basically the reason why the API looks like it it, it looks in 038 and if there are there is appetite for exploring the possibility of in a future version ABICA 3.0 for instance of um, coalescing both finalized block and commit we can actually explore it we haven't but we can if, if there is uh, interest from the users for, for that. I don't, know, I don't know if that answers the question Marco yeah, yeah for sure for sure um, I think maybe that's uh, one of the older variations but uh, I, I just left the comment that um, it's still there to be to be so, totally sincere, you. when I to be totally sincere, when I read that comment on Slack, my understanding of that is that there was some application that were persisting their state in finalized block, which I would like to take the opportunity here in this meeting to say that is wrong. Application should not be doing that. Application should should never persist the state in in the current shape of the API. Of course, if we then coalesce, you know, in the future, if we coalesce commit with finalized block, that's a different story. But as it as things stand today. Applications should not. I think it's a, it's a mistake that applications um, uh, persist their state uh, in finalized block. They have to persist it only in as a response to commit. If you want more further details for that, I'm more than uh, willing and more than, than happy to to get deeper on the on this in an ad, ad hoc meeting meeting or in a Slack conversation. Marco, did that yeah. answer? I, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I didn't have a moment to to go look, so I just wanted to carry over as this question. Oh, cool. Um, Thank you. Are there other questions on zero thirty eight? Um, yeah. Also, to to come back to, I, I don't want to open the discussion again, but just because Marco is here and I think other people from. From the SDK, just to announce that we're gonna. This is actually a little bit of a follow up from the last comment from people. We're gonna be uh, doing our best, and no, no, not that's not the right expression. The first expression is that we're gonna be paying special attention, special care, at in terms of performance. When we we will be doing our scaling tests as part of the QA, we will be paying paying particular attention on the um, verification of signatures from the application. As you know. We wrote some demo demonstration code that served as uh, inspiration for Bez for his ADR. That code is going to be run in our test, and we're going to pay special attention on how, you know, performance-wise, where are the indicators, whether that is a bottleneck or not. So just to, to let you guys know. Yeah, and so the report of the QA should should provide some insight into that. Nice. Not sure if uh, anyone from the DYDX team is here to to weigh in, but uh, I think I already updated them with the with the issue where we're tracking that, and they will probably be uh, be aware once we update that issue. So that's cool. Should we go into plans for Q two? Unless there's anything else on. Okay, doesn't seem like. Uh, I, I'll first try to describe. Uh, Ortain, do you want to uh, give the overview of the plans? Sure. I mean, we can go through these uh, high-level things over here. Um, there are a couple of major problems that we're trying to address ultimately. We're trying to focus on the problem specifically as opposed to specific solutions. We have some specific solutions in mind for, for a bunch of these things, and some of them, the work is still ongoing to understand the, the problem space a bit better. So, I mean, the... For ABCI 2.0, the main thing we want to do there is still enable new use cases for application developers. Um, then, as Adi is writing over here, the, the, the main problem behind the, the local state sync is that there is no alternative right now, or no reasonable alternative right now to network, uh, network based state sync. Let me think of that. And you know, a lot of people have been asking about having local state sync. And it was actually implemented, I think, in a, in a Past PR and Callum actually wrote up an ADR for this. I can't remember if it was an RFC or an ADR. 
So we're gonna be porting this across during Q2. So hopefully this will help alleviate some of the issues that, um, that operators have been having with regard to state sync, at least in the short term. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that we're gonna be looking into in subsequent quarters to improve state sync. But right now, this is the main thing we'll be looking at in Q2 to help improve state sync. Then um, with regard to this data companion API, so I submitted two ADRs some time ago, was back in the Tenement core repository. Um, with two, two competing models for how to offload cert certain data from the node to some kind of companion service. Think of it like a sidecar that would basically house, let's say, historic, potentially historical block data, potentially historical um, events data, uh, transaction results, et cetera. And it's stuff that we don't necessarily want to store on the node itself, or we, we don't necessarily want to provide uh, our own indexing mechanism, for example, we we want to because oftentimes the indexing is application specific, and so we'd rather provide a more generic API that integrators can potentially use to offload this data from a node, and then they could, for example, run an RPC off of that. And one of the things that we're looking at doing in Q2 is building a proof of concept of this, where we can offload block data and block results and facilitate at least a subset of the RPC endpoints based on that data. And so hopefully by doing this, we'll, we'll be, uh, to the expression, getting a number of birds with one stone. Hopefully we'll help to address some of the issues with the flaky RPC, because we know the WebSocket subscriptions are flaky. Um, we're hoping to potentially help address the DDoS ability of the RPC. And we're also, as I mentioned, uh, going to be providing an example implementation of what it looks like to offload this data into some kind of ingest mechanism. And then hopefully this will enable integrators to build all kinds of interesting and useful tools on top of this data in such a way that doesn't cause back pressure into the node. Because right now relying heavily on the RPC, we know it can cause back pressure into the node. So that's one major thing we're looking at doing in Q2. I don't know if there are any questions on that. Uh, we can actually go into quite a bit more detail as part of the, as part cool. of the, once we cover the support policy. Sounds good. And then in terms of the, the we're still investigating um, how to reduce or optimize uh, both storage consumption and bandwidth consumption. We see these as two distinct streams of work and we have a couple of ideas as to how to address this, but pretty much all of them involve substantial amounts of work. While we're doing the investigations as to how to reduce bandwidth and uh, storage consumption, we're hoping to find uh, quick wins that we can roll out. If there are quick wins that are non-breaking, we'll hopefully be able to roll those out pretty quickly. But um, for the most part, Q2 is gonna be dedicated largely towards uh, specification oriented work. So we, under, we clearly understand the requirements um, of, for example, consensus and the mempool from the P2P layer. And once we've been able to, to clearly specify that, then it's going to be a lot easier to figure out how in future releases of Comet, how to optimize the storage and bandwidth consumption. I, I might like to add something there, then. So. Sure. The, the way I see the optimization is that it is very likely that the first optimizations we're going to come up with this quarter, they are so like quick quick wins, as you say, like so obvious that it won't, there won't be a trade-off there. There won't be like, you know, it's not a trade-off. It's like, it is, you know, by doing this, it's more efficient, full stop. And we are, even if we don't have a, a formal spec, we have a strong sense that this is not breaking anything. However, once those wins are, are past us and we are saying Q3 and we want to keep on improving, then we will probably quickly run into trade-offs, into things say, okay, I can simplify this thing, but then in exchange, the users will experience this change in behavior or this thing won't happen or these two events will actually be seen only once instead of two. So, so we will run quickly run into kind of trade-offs where you need a specification, you just, you just need 
to see how acceptable tra that trade-off will be to users. And to us, that means having kind of a, like a well-written spec that tells you what is correct and what is not. And that's why we're doing we're doing that in parallel. We're doing like the quick wins, which we believe or hope that don't need a finished specification for that, and finishing the specification at the same time. I don't know if that makes sense to the to folks. Any questions on my friend? Because we, we know that we totally over gossip data on the network. And the question is how can we optimize that without affecting functionality? Um, I don't know if anybody have anybody has any uh, any questions on that front. Oh, so far I don't see anyone raising hand or anything. So I just to reiterate, these are our plans for uh, the the quarter. Your um, we keep this view of the project board pretty up to date. Uh, it's actually still being filled in, but these are the low level tasks of everything we do. So these are not major priorities. You will not see here written improved bandwidth, but it's gonna be a lot more fine grained and a lot more lower level. Uh, if you wanna see the major priorities, uh, actually they're all here and they talk in the same language that we have used here to describe the, the high level problems. Um, and then the last thing that we can also offer is that if you actually just pick up any of these issues uh, and you look at it, you can trace it back up to the high level uh, by just looking at where they are tracked. Specifically, you can trace it back to one of the major priorities that we have. So for instance, this is one of the, the major priorities. And we know we want to simplify storage management. We know there's problems with state sync. We, we spoke about both of these in the priorities now. That being said, should we go to uh, to the support policy? I'll just open the discussion here and I'll let uh, I'll let Tain refund this for a bit to to intro it. Sure. So I mean, with regard to supporting comic fifty releases, we did uh, drop a message in the shared comic fifty channel about this as well. Um, as you can see in this discussion over here, and we'd appreciate it if uh, if folks could potentially weigh in over there as well. Uh, it'll get some good feedback from, from the SDK team and from uh, from Henry from Penumbra. And uh, the, the, the type of trade-offs we have to make because we're making substantial breaking changes to the system and we're gonna be making breaking changes relatively quickly over this next year, I anticipate. Um, we have to decide on how many versions back are we going to be officially supporting in terms of, especially in terms of like critical bug fixes and security fixes. Also in terms of feature, new features that we're gonna be adding. So we have to weigh up, you know, we have limited resources, limited time. We want to be able to support uh, all the versions that are currently running in production, as many of them as possible. And we do anticipate that at least the O34 release will uh, will probably receive uh, critical bug fixes and security fixes for at least the next year, um, ideally towards the probably till, till the end of 2024. But we, yeah, we'll, we'll see how um, if the community upgrades to our, our newer releases, if the majority of users are on O37 or O38. By the middle of next year, perhaps we'll drop support for 34 sooner. Um, but again, we have limited resources to maintain support for all of these different versions. So what we might do is uh, what Henry was suggesting is we may end up just supporting new feature updates for the latest two releases. In general, we would only support the latest two releases, but we would make special exception over here for 034, especially. Now, um, given that we may actually have three releases out by uh, I think the end of Q3, probably uh, 030, no, there should be four releases, 034, 037, 038, and either 039 or V1. We haven't decided on the, the version numbering over there yet. Um, we, we have to figure out how much support are we gonna actually provide to the older releases. And we know that it takes change quite a long time 
in some cases to upgrade to newer major releases. We're also trying to minimize the diff between each of our major releases. So we can actually ship new major releases quicker, but then it does cause more disruption for folks generally. So again, we'd appreciate it if you could weigh in on the discussion over there. If you have any strong opinions, if you have any strong preferences, uh, specific versions that you want support for, for a, for a specific time period, uh, again, please weigh in over there and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how we can accommodate the needs as best we can within our resources and, and budget, obviously. Does anybody have any feedback, any, any questions, concerns they want to raise over here? From, from the SDK's point of view, um, yeah, I agree, kind of like agree and follow a similar fashion in the SDK where like um, yeah so we follow a similar fashion and practically for all the same reasons you just listed out um, we are resource constrained and so on uh marco can i have actually a, a question you, this popped up i think in one of our previous meetings and you said you were reporting that all 37 were was already being used in the like even in production is that right yes yeah, so there is like um I want to say like three or four chains working on upgrading their code to 37, um, so 47 SDK. Mm -hmm. And they, I mean, there, there's a definitely like a little bit of a competition with some teams that who wants to be like the first one to get all the new features. Um, so there's a few teams, I think like in a month, a month and a half that will upgrade to 37. Okay. Uh, any major Rope blockers so far, or something like that. Um, not, uh, nothing has come up. Um, everyone said it's smooth. I mean, the, the the biggest thing for everyone was just like the rename. Um, of course. But everyone's just everyone's just kind of like, oh, like it was a lot, but it, it was fine. So if that's like the worst feedback, then I'd say oh. it's a success. Um, but the bad, the bad yeah. news is that it's just the beginning. <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, it's all, all the um, protos, yeah. all the RPC. I mean, uh, still things that we need to rename. Anyway, yeah, I, I, I get thanks, yeah. thanks a lot for the report. Uh, I, I appreciate it. Did you want to add, add anything else from the SDK side, Marco? Uh, for for which part? Uh, just on the support policy in general. Um, uh, I think like, I mean, today we had like our first occurrence where a contributor was making a PR to 045, which was like, it was fixing a bug, but, um, it wasn't like security critical. And so we decided to close the PR, um, to try and be more strict with the release process. Um, and yeah, so we, we do the same where two releases get like bug fixes and like non-breaking minor features backported, but then uh, 045 is not only in like uh, security update path. Uh, yeah, I don't, know, I don't have much to add. I just like, uh, yeah, I agree, agree with that. Mm -hmm. I just some comments. <laughs> yeah, it's also reassuring to know that you're going through similar things where you have people opening stuff and you gotta take the call to just close their PRs and it's, uh... It's nice to know. Awesome. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Otherwise, before we go into the data companion discussion, I also wanted to check, were there any other topics that anybody on the call wanted to bring up today that, that aren't on the agenda, just in case? Is anything like urgent or burning on anybody's mind? Um, Anything anybody ever wants to share? Uh, I just, um, I, I got asked uh, again today about like if Comet was going to put ABCI in its, uh, in its own repo or in its own GoMod. Um, it was on a call with uh, the RollKit team and yeah. Um, I, I said I would ask, but I just want to see if you guys have thought about that. You mean the ABCI client, right? No, uh, the ABCI the, like, interface. The ABCI interface. 
Yeah, we haven't given an extensive thought yet. Um, that is something that we probably have to we have to think a little bit about. I don't think it would be that much of a, a major issue for us to do that uh, pragmatically. Um, we are, however, currently investigating versioning our protos for uh, one of the new breaking releases. We haven't decided which one yet. Uh, we're going to be doing that work on a. We're currently doing that work on a feature branch, um, and. Uh, once we do that, I think it's going to change the way that the proto the, the proto go code is generated. That's going to end up in its own module. Um, we also want to modularize other parts of the system as well. All the low hanging fruit is like our end to end tests, for example, that should be modularized completely separately. Because right now we have like test dependencies mixed in with uh, core dependencies in the the root go mod, which is not ideal. Um, but uh, I think that we'd like to understand a little bit more about what what the benefits are for developers of having the ABCI um, separated as its own module. Um, uh, in this context, um, I would phrase it as like uh, for like future like SDK direction. Uh, we want to be able to support like uh, rollups. Let's say, um, and to support rollups, like uh, the Rocket team introduced a couple ABCI changes to support um, uh, intermediate state routes for fraud proofs, and so uh, that's like one change they made, and I think they they have a diff another change I can't remember exactly, and so like there is the I think the ask is more on the lines of if ABCI was its own repo could abci evolve without the reliance of comet um because right now it's like right now abci is like comets abci mm -hmm. um and i think it's like if it's its own repo can abci evolve to a certain level without needing like comet to upgrade um is more more line with the question Oh. And the question is then, so if ABCI evolves independently, then Comet would have to conform to that interface as it evolves, right? There, um, so the, so yes, so it's like the, let's say the intermediate state route um, additions uh, can be like no ops in Comet. Um, or not, uh, and so stuff like that. Um, I mean, like the, the workaround that we have in the SDK that um, we'll be writing up on RFC on in the next quarter um, is basically like we will like define a, um, define like an ABCI that like merges Comet and like roll kits, like implementations. Um, and then like we would write a wrapper around Comet's ABCI and write a wrapper around Roll kits ABCI, and there's like it's like two two reasons why we want to do this. Um, the first reason is like orthogonal to like ABCI implementation. Um, we just want to have like uh, SDK modules not rely on Comet, so like Comet versioning can be independent um, of the rest of the repo. And uh, the other part is um, yeah, so so users of SDK like so we can expand our target target audience of users for the software. Interesting. Cool, yeah. It's something I think we've got to spend some time thinking about. Because um, right now, yeah, the, the, the thing is, if we evolve the ABCI interface separately to the rest of the system, or if we open that up, like if, if Comet uses an ABCI interface that is not necessarily defined by, well, maybe it's defined by us, but in, in collaboration with the community, um, we need to keep a, a sort of strict eye on that interface and the, from a protocol perspective, the correct, uh, to, to ensure that it's correct at the end of the day and that there aren't any correctness oriented concerns over there. So, so yeah, it I, seems I, as though like the, the need is for an extensible ABCI interface, right? Yeah, I, I have a different proposal for this, but th that's like a can of worms. <laughs> okay. The inverted ABCI interface or? 
Uh, that that's a portion of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I, I actually renamed inverted AV side to bidirectional. Bidirectional. Yeah, I, yeah, like, I saw that. I think it makes yeah. a lot more sense. Yeah. Yeah. But Marco, besides the role kit team, so there there could be say currently let's just say that there's kind of two competing versions. Role kit, comment. Uh, are there other users that you could imagine there there could weigh in on this and that would have uh, interests or ideas or needs? That that's a good question. Um, uh, I can ask around. I think it's very um, if uh, so. I think in, in the like the roll up world, like ABCI is like amazing. It's like it's this canonical uh, ABI interface that you can like plug VMs into and plug applications into, and you don't have to really worry about like the underlying like networking. Um, so it's like, it's really, really nice. And it's like, because there's like a world of like sequencers evolving right now. So there's like the espresso sequencer, there's roll quit, and there's like other sequencers also being built out. Um, and there's also like the sequencers of like optimism and arbitrum, but like the, the question kind of becomes like, okay, like if you don't want to use like arbitrum's, uh, sequencer design, um, and they're like any trust DAC model, um, then like you kind of have to i don't know if you can do it today because it's like so tightly coupled um so so i think there like could be users but it's just like right off the bat it just kind of roll kit and comment i would say got it very interesting yeah i think we'll we'll have a chat about that in the team and see if there's mm -hmm. uh yeah yeah we'll use some feedback after we've had a chance to discuss Yep. Very interesting idea. Also, the initial person that was asking about this, Marco, just to clarify, this was not Jay Kwan. This was some other Jay from Rollkit. Uh, the, I don't think anyone was asking from, I don't think there's anyone Jay on Rollkit. Did I mention Jay somewhere? Oh, sorry. I, I just wrote, which is what I understood. I might have understood wrong. I wrote, Jay was asking if Comet will put ABCI interface in its own repo. <laughs> That's what I understood. Oh, I was, sorry. I, uh, I, I may have said like roll kit, um, like roll, like roll kit, blah, blah, blah. They were asking this, but like I was on, I was on a, I was, a, I was on a call with roll kit and they were asking me if I had any updates of ABCI becoming its own repo. Cool. So it, it might've just been like, um, just noise interference. Yeah. Um, cool, cool. Yeah, this this is quite fascinating. We'll definitely uh, need to consider that and to open up the ABCI to slightly bigger bigger use cases if if uh, that's what the community needs. Should we chat? Uh, we still have fifteen twenty minutes. Should we chat a bit about the data companion API and then? Uh... Yeah, I'm happy to to chat about it. Um, I mean, I gave a, a high level overview of what we're and what we're trying to do over here. Um, the main goal, as I said, is to be able to offload certain kinds of data from a node onto some perhaps application specific sidecar of some kind. And there, um, the data companion effectively has an influence over the way in which the node prunes its data. So right now there's only one source of information for a comic based node as to um, what the pruning height is set to, and that is a response from the application. And uh, so the application ends up controlling um, pruning height and the, the database is pruned, uh, I think it's during the commit phase, if I remember correctly. And uh, what, we're, what we're looking at doing over here is introducing another variable that influences the pruning height, and that will be the data companion pruning height. Now, by default, again, we're working on this on a feature branch, we still have to figure out which versions this is going to go into. Uh, we have to figure out, um, I mean, it'll be off by default, so it'll be opt-in. And you'll be able to turn it on via configuration. And the data companion, the idea is to only have one single sidecar that pulls data, specific in this case, the at least in the first version, it'll be a block data and block results. It'll be playing from the node, ideally, as close to real time as possible. But with the pull API, um, it's up to the companion to decide how quickly it wants to pull the data. 
The companion can then indicate back to the full node, this is the height up to which it's safe to prune from my perspective, from the, the companion's perspective. And then what the application or what, what Comet will do at the end of the day is it'll take the lower of the two heights dictated by the application and the companion, and it'll prune up to that height whenever it does its pruning operations. And uh, then what we're hoping for, and, and by the way, the, the ADR that we have up here, we have to make a couple of changes to it. So there's a few, a few things in the interface that I've had to tweak uh, based on the proof of concept I'm currently working on. But um, the, the overall idea, does, does the overall idea make sense? Like, does anybody have any questions or concerns around this? And uh, any ideas? Uh, For instance, for operators, um, Jacob, or for IBC relayers, this will be an, another way in which you can offer either public nodes through the through the new interface. So you're going to build your own internal database, and then you're going to open that instead of opening up the actual node that is doing consensus, and for for IBC relayers as well. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, one of the major potential use cases here is uh, building out your own horizontally scalable RPC uh, separate to the node itself. Uh, another use case, as Adi was saying, was building out an IBC node to facilitate relaying. Um, I, I can envisage a type of data companion that is like a fan out companion of sorts that pipes data through to a bunch of different consumers. Um, there's potentially... Uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can, you can think of over there. Um, I mean, that that companion will have access to all the transaction data. It'll have action. It'll have access to uh, all the event data, um, and it's only committed data that it gets access to. Yeah, I would like to. I see that Jay is here. I would like to add that. Um, I think Zay mentioned it in the when we were discussing about this before in the in our plans. Uh, there's going to be like a say initial companion that we're going to offer so that people don't get broken which is going to be what we are now offering as part of uh, comet which is all in a monolithic way you know mixed up with comet like offering you know producing sometimes bad pressure into the consensus etc so this is uh, this is basically the kind of like initial uh, data companion we're going to offer so that people can still they don't have any other solution they can still Keep on using the RPC, which is now in a different process. And what I was, was about to say is that for that process, if you know, we still need to discuss when and how to do it. But like the the effort that you guys have been doing on ADR of seventy five would still make sense in that uh, particular initial companion because it is going to be offering. I think uh, Mark also asked this in the in the chat. So this initial companion would be offering the same RPC we're offering now, but in a different process. And so people, like users, can just you know, as as Stein said, can knock it out and build their own by using by just exploiting the the new interface, which is supposed to be uh, minimal, simplistic, etc. Mm -hmm. To add on to what Sergio was saying over there, we're not planning on removing the RPC or changing the RPC in Comet yet. This is an additional interface that we're adding, and for now, it'll be an experimental interface, so people can play around with it. You can try and iron out any of the potential bugs, etc. Again, it's opt-in only, so it's only if you do want to experiment with it. By default, it won't have any impact on the system at all if you if you leave it off. And uh, as Sergio was saying, the ADR seventy five work, which is currently on a feature branch uh, on the com in the Comet repository, that is something that that we're strongly considering. Put, like getting into this uh, standalone RPC companion. Um, we, if there is a, a strong desire still to have that as part of the node itself, we can potentially look at scheduling that in at some point. Um, I don't know if it'll end up being in Q2, given how much stuff we have on our plate right now, but uh, we could potentially get the work from ADR75 into the standalone RPC. Eventually, at some point in future, we want to be able to uh, have a version of the RPC so that we can evolve the RPC, uh, say in, in uh, feature up in feature releases, as opposed to, you know, people already have to incur so much pain and suffering in uh, upgrading to new breaking releases. 
So, you know, to, to be limited to changing the RPC in a breaking release only means even more pain for users in those breaking releases. So being able to offer multiple versions of the RPC in a single release would be ideal, I think. Then, then it'll give people time to, to upgrade their clients to use the new version of the, the RPC. Then we can progressively deprecate the old version. And then at some point in the distant future, we can remove those old versions. And so we're also looking at versioning this, uh, so our, our reference implementation of an RPC. We're gonna be versioning that. So V1 will be the standard um, will be, as, as I was like saying earlier, and this is in the chat, that'll be a subset of RPC endpoints that are currently exposed by Comet using exactly the same um, endpoint structure, the same JSON RPC format, the same response and request formats, et cetera. We're gonna try and have as little breaking impact of there as possible on, uh, on clients. Well, um... So, so the RPC within Comet will kind of like live on and then like in the future more has become like optional. Um, so or... I think in, in future, what I think we may end up doing is um, if this takes off, if this is something that users enjoy using this uh, companion RPC, and if, if that's the, a better way for them to run an RPC, going forward, then eventually we might start to deprecate at least certain endpoints exposed by the Comet RPC. And we, simultaneously with this in parallel, we're also looking at exposing a gRPC interface, but a full gRPC interface to the Comet node. And so I think that we may eventually consolidate the interface, just have a certain, like a few gRPC endpoints accessible via the Comet node. and um, to do away with at least the majority of the JSON RPC uh, from the Comet mode. But that's still a long way off and that's still pending feedback from the community. So we're not planning on doing that anytime soon. Just, just one thought. The, the, the goal we're having here, I mean, one of the goals we're having here is that we consider that indexing and building like an ad hoc database as we have today, this is not the role of, of our consensus engine. And so we're trying to somehow kind of isolate it. We won't remove it because it's there and people depend on it. But uh, you know, moving forward, I'm sure that there are teams there that are going to do a way better job than we have today at, at indexing events and making you know building a database or something so that people can query. This is basically the the, the you know, so so there are RPC endpoints that require that indexing and there are other RPC endpoints that don't. So probably I don't know. Keep me on the here, but I think here we're more focusing on those RPC. That require that indexing. Those in yeah, in the, the long term, term, I would like that I would like to see them disappear and being implemented yeah. by, by people that know well how to implement that with with the good tools, etc. Like this is not yeah. something uh, our consensus engine should should, be, should should have been doing uh, from day one. Actually. Yeah, I think the the main yeah the um, indexing is often a very application specific thing, and so as Sergio is saying. Like it shouldn't be something that's taken care of by the consensus engine. The consensus engine needs to focus just on consensus, and we want we want to offload that in a sane, reliable way. And the problem we have today is that even if somebody wanted to help us on there or wanted to do their own stuff, they can't because it's all monolithic. Yeah, I, I'd say like my number one ask um, of this and like whatever format is chosen is to not use the JSON library within Comet um, because yeah, it's like wanna, yeah, it's I amino flavored. It's possible. <laughs> Go get, thank you. Yeah. What was it? Why not? I didn't catch that. Marco. It's, um, it's amino flavored JSON. And so it's mm -hmm. like the reason why it exists is because when we were rewriting everything to protobuf, um, we were just like, um, Sorry, Duke's just like running to another dog. Um, we were like, okay, we can't break the RPC on people. So we should uh, like copy paste the JSON implementation from Amino just so that's like one less breakage because everything is going proto right now. Um, and it was like, oh, in the next release, we'll, we'll remove it. And then it just never happened. Yeah. And I see it's the, a, 
it's a lot of reflection based glue code in there it's, a, it's yeah a, it's difficult to troubleshoot and it like we eventually want to to get to a yeah we, we definitely want to remove it eventually but we're, we're, we're trying to right now we're trying to figure out a concrete roadmap as to how to how to roll the stuff out so we can at least give users a heads up as to when we're planning on doing that and i don't anticipate that we'll be deleting it entirely this year most likely um at least from the exist like we won't be doing doing it with the existing releases obviously um but in terms of new releases i don't know if we'll get to it this year to actually remove it entirely it may only be like next year sometime so but again it also depends on how quickly the community takes up our new releases so the quicker the community takes up our new releases the quicker we can evolve the the interfaces to something a little more sane and uh, standards compliant but going back there's the concerns here from what i heard you say uh, a there's the concern uh, of marco not to reuse the json library and b there's the concern to eliminate what currently exists and not, not use that in the current code uh, the, yeah. but the first one what marco was, was saying was not to use it uh, in the data companion is that feasible that should be yeah i think so okay. so the, the main thing that's necessary from the rpc companion would be that it would uh, implement the same serialization format it doesn't have to it doesn't have to use the the same code necessarily the big thing is that it must be um let's say uh wire compatible with the current rpc um, at least v1 of the api and, and i think that there are other ways in which we can achieve this other than reusing the existing code but um at least that'll be v1 so as to not break clients uh, v2 of this rpc companion api will be yeah we'll have we, we still have to write up an adr for that but i imagine it'll be something I, I mean i was i was quite impressed with the work that the buff team has been doing on their i think it was connect protocol and so they allow for definition of um your data structures in protobuf and then they have all the necessary, like I think they have a full gRPC implementation and RPC implementation that then uh, can automatically translate that into JSON as well. So you can also simultaneously expose JSON endpoints. And so if you if you have the protos, then it's easier to, to build clients um, that can interact with that, that interface. Yeah, if we were to redo the SDK, we would do the same thing because right now we have gRPC web, uh json rpc gateway uh json gateway and grpc because the the buff stuff didn't exist back then yeah it's pretty new this uh buffs can yeah. work it's, it's very impressive i think yeah very cool thing uh, uh one last question do you think we should open the community this um like dilemma about whether 100 or 101 is the, the most um, appropriate. I'm still not deciding on the Australia truth. I've been, I've been through, the, through it today and I'm still like, I still have concerns. Mm -hmm. So maybe get, getting yeah. feedback from people that will, would ultimately be implementing, you know, the companion part. Like maybe, um, I don't know, maybe this meeting is too, sure. too rushed because pe people don't have context, but maybe announcing it somehow in the, um, in the shared yeah, can, channel to see. A... I can give like a brief overview of the difference between the two ADRs. So as I said earlier, I have two competing ADRs up. The one is ADR 101, which is the Dedic pool companion. So it's it's a pool model where your your sidecar is a client that talks to the Comet node, which is a gRPC server. And the so ADR 100 is what we call a push companion. It actually uses a model quite similar to how Comet interacts with a socket-based ABCI server. So in that case, the, the companion becomes a server and Comet becomes a client. And in that case, the, the what happens is every time a block is committed, as it's committed, it will push the block and block results in real time to the companion. Now, the problem with this architecture is that if the companion goes down, for example, then it has to take the node down with it, potentially. So in that case, you have much stronger guarantees that data will be delivered to the companion in real time, but then it could affect the liveness if, if your companion is flaky. 
the alternative approach in ADR 101 of making the companion the client, I think it's kind of like a, it, it gives you the option of having a lazy companion, one that doesn't have to operate in real time, like with the, I, the push I, companion. I model. think that that's the way, the second one. Um, the reason the second one is the way, uh, so ADR 101 uh, is that we, we don't we don't want the node to go down. Um, yes. So I you know I, in fact like I, I I'm comfortable to voice a pretty strong opinion on that. Um, go with full decoupling. Cool. Yeah, this is the why I was leaning. Excellent strong. input. Excellent input, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Thanks for that. Jacob. Really happy. Really happy to have to bring it <laughs> brought it up. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think there was another user who actually recommended this approach. I initially submitted ADR 100. It was a different number on the Tenement Core repository last year. And another user recommended this alternative approach. And then I thought about it for a while and I thought that's no, it's probably the more robust approach by far than yeah, the, the forcing. Yeah. The, just I'm, I'm putting the devil's advocate hat here, okay? Mm -hmm. So the, the problem I have with 101 is that um, there's no, like, they, there's no strong, I mean, maybe we can define it somehow, but there are no strong means to then limit the storage that the node is, because since since the, the node is now not deciding when things are consumed, that means that if uh, if the lazy companion, as you have just defined it, is too lazy, then basically things will pile up in the node storage, and so we will basically defeat the whole purpose of you know of, of the companion. I, I think that that's kind of out of our control to a certain degree. Like so, either we force um, like pruning on users, or we we have a an approach where users and operators are more in control of how a node prunes. And so if their companion is too lazy and it doesn't facilitate effective pruning, then they're gonna they're gonna see it in uh, the amount of storage growth on both sides, depending on what data. Because remember the companion, you can pull data via the, I mean with with the companion with the pull companion, you can either query the existing JSON RPC API on the node or you could pull data, we're gonna be exposing a gRPC endpoint to get the block data and the block result data. So you can pull whichever of those two you want, and then you can store whatever you want of that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And the second concern I have with that is, is that, like it's not clear to me, like when does the companion know that for instance, new block has been produced? So let's say the companion is actually up to date and it wants to be not, I, I believe that the elegant way is to have sort of a notification so it would be some sort of yeah. I don't know and so that means that now we have a, bi for that. a directional thing so we have you know we have comp I, it's fine I mean it's not I don't say I'm not saying it doesn't work but it's like now it's more complex now we have like the pull part mm -hmm. but there's also a push part which is notification so it's like you know yes. the, the interactions are now harder to specify harder to use by the client etc so that, those were my, my main concerns okay. they are not blocking concerns but just wanted to voice them <laughs> so there, there are multiple ways for uh like if we expose the pool companion API, there are multiple ways for a companion to access the data that it may need. One way, so, so there's existing flaky WebSocket subscription API, right? So they can be notified of new blocks via that API. A lot more lightweight, uh, a much more lightweight approach that I'm envisaging for ADR 101 is to expose a gRPC streaming API that just gives you notifications as to the height of yeah, the exactly. committed blocks. Exactly. Yeah, but that means that that mm -hmm. is information that flows in one direction, so yes. defines a flow control in the in the companion, and then the rest of the logic is you know the rest of the logic. Okay, something happened. Let me go find out what happened. And so there is like one you know logic in one direction, and then a whole other set of logic in the other direction in the pull direction, right? So this one yeah, push the companion... and then some pull. So it's not really you know it's not really push pull, right? Like the, the one 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 hundred is purely uh, push. Mm -hmm. And 101 is hybrid, is a little bit of push right. and a lot of pull. That's uh, right. Kind of. Uh, like, so so I, th I think perhaps we can change the names of the ADRs if you really want to. The the one is a where the companion is a client and the other one with the is where the companion is a server. So yeah. those two models have substantial implications um, in terms of uh, liveness of the node. Like which model you choose. Has a has a substantial implication in terms of node liveness and I do want to was saying yeah I yep. do want to hear Jacob's opinion again whether you have strong so you already have a strong opinion with regards to that because you don't want the node to go down 
But then the disadvantage of that approach being, like Sergio mentioned, uh, you cannot limit the storage growth and you cannot have as responsive of a design with, without some uh, push-based mechanism to complement. Any opinions there, Jacob? No, but, or... but you can limit the storage growth on the node if the companion manages the, the retained height that it sets yeah. correctly. Yeah, okay. you, you depend on the correct on the correctness of the behavior of the companion okay. to limit to limit to be able to limit the nodes uh, storage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Jacob. Uh, well, uh, this the, the last topic, the proposal based timestamps. Uh, by the way, Jacob, we'll, we'll follow with you on Slack just to wrap it up so that people cool, can go cool. in case they uh, they need to. So we'll follow up on that asynchronously. The, I'll just push this to next week because it wasn't urgent. No one really uh, mentioned it. They're uh, uh, blocked or uh, we're not blocked anything either. So that's fine. Yeah, but if anybody is blocked on proposal-based timestamps, if anybody really wants it, please reach out to us and then we can try and figure out how to schedule in because the work has already been done. It's about just trying to figure out which breaking release to schedule it into. It is trapped in 036 as uh, yeah. ABC, ABCI++ used to be. Now we freed it. <laughs> yeah. One, awesome. one quick question. Um, now, now that Sergio said uh, 036 uh, kind of just hit me. Um, the, you guys updated the ABCI interface to like pass contexts and pass errors. Um, are these like Got uh, plumbed on, like no. plumbed through on the context. Okay, no, okay. No, we we left it like I mean, okay. Yeah. This is like um, I mean, okay. How to explain this? Um, I think maybe no is enough not... because we're running over time. Yes, let's just so let's just take it. This is this is tech that we have. Let's put it yeah, we, we have it planned in to rethread the okay. context through everything. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't awesome. have. Yeah. I I personally would have added them added them now. I would have waited till we have the, the resources and the time to basically thread it all through. So going from no context to good context, uh, but okay, that's the way in the end it ended up happening. Uh, you, you made us happier that you 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 at least put it on the interface because uh, we like yeah we'll, we'll we'll definitely take advantage of it. Um, I take note from that. So, yeah. That is cool. That is cool. <laughs> I take note from that. I, I I I'm surprised that you say that because. You know, like I, you know, okay. Anyway, I we won't have fun from that. So I'm, I'm, I'm surpri uh, like surprised. How to say this in English? Like surprised in a positive way. <laughs> yeah, pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank thanks you. everyone for your time. Have a good Thank day. You. See you. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye.